Our little Yerf dog, powered by a Subaru Robin 9 horsepower engine, is a workhorse for us. It's probably our most dependable go-kart, if I had to be honest. Wasn't even designed for 9 horsepower. Yeah, yeah, and it's, yeah. it's done totally fine. It's reliable, it has electric start, it's plenty powerful, it's not over the top fast, but it, it, it moves pretty well. While this Yerf dog has been a workhorse for us, it has not gone without a little bit of damage. So we're gonna do some repairs today and we're also going to upgrade it, get it ready for night riding, and get it ready for longer rides as well. We have uh, some LEDs to put on it. We're going to put a fresh belt on it. We're gonna repair and reinforce the frame and we're also gonna try to mount some more storage on it. We're gonna start it off by repairing the cracks in the frame. Seems like the more we ride it, the more cracks we find. So right in there is the crack in question. It's a common problem from what I've seen online. A lot of y'all have talked about engine cradle lower suspension cracking too, so there's not a whole lot we can do about it except maybe redesigning one for ourselves. That's a really good fit, man. Like it was meant to be. So to reinforce this frame, we're using gussets from gopowersports.com. They sell all different shapes and sizes. We're using some of the beefier ones uh, just because we don't want to deal with any more cracking in the rear half of this Yerf dog. They're carbon steel and they're not galvanized. You can find links to them in the description of this video and use our discount code CC10 for 10% off most parts at gopowersports.com to get an even better deal on parts and to help support us as well. All right, dude, so I'm gonna start off with just welding up these pieces here. Okay. And then we'll guess it. Sounds good. All right. Oh yeah, that's gonna be plenty beefy, dude. Yep. Just gonna spray a little bit of touch-up paint. That ought to do. Now we can take the filter off, carburetor off, clean it up. Dude, is that mud in there? Yeah, it is. Did it leak in from these sides when we had to modify this adapter? That's probably what happened. Yeah. This is worrying me a little bit, honestly. Dude. All the mud and stuff? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's not smoking. <laughs> it's been it's adjusting just some mud. The cylinders are honed out a little bit more. Where's the gasket? I don't think... Dude, we don't have a gasket on it. There's no gasket. Well, that could be an issue, buddy. Yeah, that explains a couple things. Yeah. This thing still runs like a champ. <laughs> Can't stop a Subaru. Not yet. I figured we take the whole carburetor off, dude. Okay. And uh, we can open it up and take a good look at her. Sounds good. Oh, boy. Oh, there it goes. Fuel everywhere. There it goes. So we had to put the camera down. We got the carburetor off, and uh, we pulled the gasket off. And, and what, you, what are you finding, man? Uh, Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Some dirt. <laughs> just a little, a little bit. bit. Just a little bit. Man, I, I just want to see if this Makuni can yes, get on. Yes, definitely. In terms of horsepower, it should be fine. In fact, we'll probably pick up some horsepower if it'll work. Man, the holes are so close. I think that if we take these uh, studs, out. studs out and just get some short bolts, it might just bolt right up. All right. Yeah, I'm totally down to do that, man. So we found some hardware that's gonna work with this Subaru head. Of course, your Makuni kit will come with uh, proper hardware for a Predator 212, but we had to scramble some stuff up for ourselves for this Subaru. Can't wait to see how this thing runs with this Makuni on here. Yeah, I know. Nice. She's up there. Now we can run throttle linkage and put some gas in it and give it a shot. Oh, look. There's a wasp nest under there. A big one? Yeah. <laughs> so we've been riding this thing around with that wasp nest under there. Yeah. I hope there weren't any wasps in it. <laughs> I know. The thing was attached on there good, man. We've been, we jumped this thing. Did we? I think so. Because you hit your head really hard on that. I flipped this thing. Dude, are you okay? Yes, you did roll. Oh, up. you know what? I did I did jump it and I whacked my head up there. Yeah, we beat Pretty this hard. thing up, dude. And it keeps on going. Snap ring right there. Alright. 
All right, there's choke. No choke. Hey man, it's already nicer than the original. Might have to idle up. up a little bit. I'll warm it up. Okay. Is it lean? Yeah. Maybe it'll change when it warms up a little bit. It was spinning, sputtering now. Yeah. I think that's Our a lean is a little issue. small, I guess. We could adjust the jet and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, when I floorboard it. Yeah, so it's spinning and sputtering, acting like it's uh, lean. Screen. And you can check this out. This snap ring, E-clip, whatever you want to call it, is about midway up the needle valve. We want to add a little bit more extra fuel, so what we do is we take this little E-clip and take it loose and we move it down to a lower section, which allows the needle to rise up further out of the jet. when I decelerate and stuff, yeah. it's, it's a little on the lean side. Still? Yeah. Uh, I think we need to... Maybe we can drop the jet out of it and open her up, or we're going to have to go to a bigger carburetor. Okay. So we still have a little bit of carburetor tuning to do, but we're going to move on to installing the lights and the switch for the lights. So I'm going to start by welding these two washers next to our engine kill switch. And that's where we're going to mount our toggle, and then we can work on wiring for the LEDs up front. So I can screw in the switch and we can wire up the lights. We need to show them what we're working with too though. Oh yeah? In terms of lights. It has one of our two headlights that we're going to be using. It's a 15 watt floodlight we just bought from the uh, local farm supply store. We're going to test it just on the wall here before we mount it just because we want to see how bright it's going to be. Yeah man. Not bad. And we have two of those. Yep. So I think it's going to work out really well for us. Bam. It's kind of cool. Yeah, dude. It looks good. It looks like a little sand rail. It yeah. looks sweet. Looks like a little buggy. Checking the bottom. Uh-oh. Nice. So we're going to run power from the bottom one, since that one's always on, from the bottom over to our new switch that's going to the headlights, right? That's right. <laughs> Switch is upside down, but other than that, it works. Tomorrow morning, we're gonna be doing our carburetor adjustments and we're gonna also add some extra storage on the Yerf Dog. We'll see you then. Good morning, guys. We gave it some thought and rather than trying to fatten up our 22 millimeter Makuni more, we're just gonna swap it out for a 26 millimeter Makuni carburetor. So Ike's in the middle of taking the 22 off. We're gonna put a 26 on it and it should be nice and rich. 
All right, so the 26 millimeter is installed. It's time for a test drive. <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah, uh, totally fix it. We just need a bigger carburetor. I uh, need to idle it up too, or did you cut it off? I cut it off. Dude, I totally forgot that little jump was there. That thing was awesome. Dude, like, I don't think any part of your body was touching the go-kart. <laughs> like, you were just like, your whole butt and your like legs went out the sides. The last thing we're doing to the Yurf Dog today to turn it into an off-road utility vehicle is adding storage. We already have a little luggage rack back here, uh, but that space is already reserved for a fuel tank and maybe some spare tools. Uh, we wanted room for maybe some water bottles uh, and just other miscellaneous items, toe straps, etc. So we went to our farm supply store and they had these ammo cans on sale for like eight bucks a piece. So we're gonna mount them to the side of the frame right here. And that's solid. That's one way to do it. We got to represent with a sticker. Does that look center to you? If you want to pick up some Cars and Cameras stickers, you can get them at cars-cameras.com to dress up your project and to help support us too. So this is how it's going to roll at Busco Beach. Hope y'all like it. I'm thrilled with it. Yeah, uh, if there's anything else you can think of for us to do to it, let us know. But I think it's in pretty darn good shape. I mean, it's not going to tackle everything, but it's like, I think it marks like a 7 to 8 out of 10 in every category. I mean, it's pretty comfortable, it's pretty fast, it's pretty capable, the lights are pretty darn good, and it has pretty good storage. Yes. It's just an all-around, just good, solid runner. Man, I, I'm, I totally think that this would outrun your truck. The monster truck? The man? monster truck. I mean like outrun in a straight line on concrete? Man, I, Probably. Anything, anything. Anything. We're gonna have to find out. Bring it. All right. So next time we're doing your dog versus monster truck go-kart. That's gonna be a good one. Anyway, leave us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video today. It helps our content get seen by more people and subscribe for more awesome content. Of course, gopowersports.com. Use our discount code CC10 for 10% off most parts, the Makuni 22, the Makuni 26, check them out. Uh, and if you want to support us in what we do, pick up some of our shirts, hoodies, stickers at cars-cameras.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.